In this video, we're going to be selecting an individual product by its ID from our in-memory store. So what's happening right now is when we click on this view button, we pass this ID to the back end and we get an individual product from the back end. So we make an API call to get this product and then we render the information here. But in this case, we already have this information inside of our in-memory store. So if I click on the Redux, the state, and the products, we have this information right here. So in this case, the product number is 149, and we have that here. So we should actually select this information from our store instead of making this extra API call. And that's what we'll set up in this video. To select a entity by its ID, we'll need to create a few selectors. So let's open up the product selector file. And then I'll add in a brand new selector up here at the top. And the job of this selector is to select all of the entities that are inside of this store. And we're using this select entities. If we take a look at that, and here we're getting all of these from this adapter here. And we use the select all, and the select all returns us a array of products. But now we're using the select entities, and this is going to return us a dictionary. And if we go back here, so whenever we want all of our entities as a dictionary, we'll call on this selector. The next selector we want to create is to check to see if the entity exists in our store. And this is going to return us a Boolean, and I called it Entity Exist. So whenever we want to check real quickly if the entity exists or not, we'll call on this. And we're passing in the Select All Entities selector we just created. And here we're doing something a little different. We're passing in some parameters. So whenever you want to pass in parameters that do not exist in your store, you could pass it in by using this props. In this case, we're gonna be passing in a ID and we're passing it in right here. And this is how we're gonna to check to see if the entity exists by passing in this ID. So if the entity is undefined, we're gonna pass back false. And if it does exist, we're gonna return true. The next selector we wanna create, I'll add right here. This selector is gonna do the job of actually getting the entity by its ID. And here we're passing in the select all entities. And again, we're using the props that NGRX gives us. This is how we're going to pass the parameters in. In this case, we're just going to be passing in an ID. And we actually return the entity by its ID. That is it for the selectors. Let's open up the file we'll be using this selector. So inside the view, and we'll open up the TS file. And then also the item. This is like our admin section. We'll open this up as well. And we'll start inside of the view. So this is our shopping area. And inside the ng on it, how we're getting the ID is from the route, and we pass it on to our servers. So what we do is we make an API call every time this component is called on. And what we're going to do now is we're going to check our store to see if the entity is inside of our store before we go calling our service. So this whole section right here, I'm going to comment it out. And we'll need to do some setup work before we start calling our selectors. Like, for example, this, I'm going to store this result here in a variable so i'll copy this and we'll create a new property name to store this in i'll call it product id and what we'll get back is a string and then inside the ng on it i'll set that property and that's going to be equal to paste this in and now we have access to that id whenever we want now we want to call the entity exists selector and this is going to return as a boolean and before we do that, though, we need to import our selector file. So I'll bring that in. So whenever we want access to any of our selectors, we could just call on this. And then we want to set up our store. So inside the constructor, I'll add that on at the bottom. And we'll bring everything in. So I'll bring in the store from NGRX and the app state from the index file. And now we're ready to finally start calling our selectors. So we'll call on the entity exists selector. So to do that, we'll call the store and use the pipe. And then NGRX gives us the select operator. So we'll use that. And then in here, we'll, we'll put in our selector. So from the product selectors, and we're after the entity exists. So now what we're going to be doing is something a little different than what we've been doing in prior modules. Now we're going to be passing in a parameter. And as you can see here, you could pass in a second parameter, your props. In this case, we're going to be passing in an ID. And to do that, you put in a comma, then an object, and then whatever parameters you want to pass in. In this case, I'm going to be passing in 
the ID. And we have that inside of our variable now, so that's going to be this product ID. And again, we're getting back a Boolean and an observable Boolean, so we want to store this somewhere. And I'll create another variable up here. And I called this property is product in store, and this is going to be an observable. So we'll bring that in from RxJS, and it's going to have a Boolean. So now we could use this. So I'll set this right here. So it is product in store, and it's going to be equal to whatever we get back from, from this right here. And now we could check our store to see if the entity exists. So let's add that. So here we're calling on our new property, and we're using the pipe. And now what we're going to do is return another observable. The new observable we're passing back is going to be an observable with a product in it. So we'll bring in the merge map from RxJS. And then what we'll do is we'll pass in the Boolean that we're getting from our observable here. And then we check to see if there is no entity. If there is no entity, we're going to create a couple actions for that in the next couple of videos. For now, I'm just logging it out. So if there is no entity, we're going to make an API call, get the product, put it in the store. Then we should have the entity inside the store. And then we'll go and we'll select the entity from the store by its ID. And this is going to return us a observable product. Like we did right here, though, we'll need to create another property name for our product. And we'll, we'll set to whatever we're getting from here, we'll set this, this new variable. So we'll create that up here. And this is going to be an observable with a product. And we can remove this now. We're not going to need that. We'll need to change the HTML around a little bit, the template. And then now that we have that, we can set that product variable. So this product is going to be equal to whatever we get back from this. And again, right here, we're going to be dispatching an action. We'll be doing that in the next video. And that's pretty much it for this file. Let's copy this piece right here. We'll go ahead and we'll set up the product item page. So we'll copy all this good stuff right here. Let's jump over to the product item TS file. And what we'll do here is almost exactly what we did in the other page. So within the ng on it, I'm going to comment all this out. The side effect for the spinner and things like that, we'll be setting that up in the next couple of videos as well. So I'm going to leave this here so we'll come back to this. And then I'm just going to add in our snippet right here. And we'll need to pull in a bunch of things. We'll need to set up our properties and also bring in merge map from RxJS. So let's start at the top and work our way down. We'll bring in our selector file. And then we'll bring in our store. So I'll add that within the constructor right here. Bring in this store from NGRX and the app state. And let's add in a couple of properties. So we already have an observable of products so we don't need to add that in but we need to add in our, our other two properties and that is the is product in store and the product id and now we need to bring in our select operator from ngrx and that should take care of all of our errors now let's open up our html file so if we go back in here we need to make one more change and that is inside the product view html now I'll close this down and then inside of here, this is an observable now. So we'll want to make sure we change this over. So I'll add on the dollar sign and then we'll use async and it's going to be set to product. So we'll have this global product variable now and that should take care of all of your errors. So now we're ready for testing. Let's check it out in the browser and see how everything is working. So this should work pretty much the same, but now we'll be getting the product from the store instead of making an API call every time we want to view a product. And this will only work if we have the product in the store. So if we actually look inside of our developer tools, click on network, and we should not see any API call because we currently have this product within the store. So let's view this. And as you can see, no movement here, so that's good. And then our shopping page should work the same. So we made an API call. We went out and got a list of products. So we have all these products currently in our store. Then if we view an individual product, we don't make any API call. But what if we don't have a product in our store? If we go inside of our store, look at all of our products. So here is the list of products. But if we refresh the browser, we're going to lose all this information. And we're still passing in this ID. So what we'll need to do now is make a call to the back end if there are no products inside our store and add that product to our store. So let's refresh the browser. 
and we get the white screen. The reason is, is there's no product in our store anymore. And if you remember, what we're doing is we're logging out this message from our TS file. Now what we'll do is we'll set up a few actions. We'll dispatch an action to get an individual product if that product does not exist in the store. And we'll do that next.